Hey everybody, this is Terry Battisti with the Bass Fishing Archives, your sole source for bass fishing history. And what I got to for you guys today is pretty special, historically, with respect to bass fishing. Uh, a couple weeks ago we did a, a, a video on the first issue of Bassmaster Magazine, spring 1968 issue. And uh, at that time we told you that we would be recording the first three to five years, I think it's 68 through 73 is what we've been uh, given the go ahead from Bassmaster to do. Uh, and that in itself is a, is a really a, a cool privilege for us to be able to, to present to you folks. Because not many people have seen the original five years of Bassmaster Magazine. But what I got for you today, uh, it, it's right up there in coolness. Uh, it's the, some of the first Bassmaster Classic Press Guides. Uh, this one here is the 1975 Classic Press Guide. I uh, have the 1976 Press Guide, the 78 Press Guide, and the 79 Press Guide. And I really want to shout out to, to Ken Duke because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have these. Uh, Ken uh, thought that they may be useful uh, to us and uh, so he sent me up a, a set of four and what we're going to do is we're going to cover these in the next uh, three or four weeks leading up to the classic. Now I've got again, I, I got the go ahead from BASS to do this. I feel pretty privileged to be able to share it with you. Uh, the, the unique thing about these press guides is that there were hardly any of these printed and the reason for that is is because back in the 75, 76, 71, actually I think it was 71 through 78, the Bassmaster Classic was a mystery lake. The anglers got on an airplane at some airport, uh, and when they got to 10,000 feet, that is when Ray Scott announced where they were gonna be fishing for the next four days. So because of that, there was no press there except press that were the observers in the boats of the guys that were fishing the classic. So this is a, a pretty special deal here. There was maybe only a couple of hundred of these printed. Um, you know, you had uh, the for the 30 or 40 pr uh, press that would be at the at the event, uh, and obviously probably for the anglers and and anybody else that was there, uh, they they probably got one. There's no price on them. The 1979 uh, press guide, there's actually a price on it. So I need to talk to someone at Bass, maybe Bob Cobb, he can give me an idea of, of why there's a price on the, 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 the ninth annual. Is that, I, I gotta go check back and, and make sure which one they actually announced prior to. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the computer. I've got this thing fully scanned and we're gonna go through the guide, just like I did the spring of 68 issue of Bassmaster. Uh, I promise I won't be 45 minutes on this one. We'll, we'll blaze through it a little bit quicker. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place the issue on the Bass Fishing Archives website under historical uh, pictures. And that way you can go to the gallery and go through the press guide at your leisure. Uh, you'll be able to read every word on every page, and it really is a, a pretty cool look back into what was going on in 1975, and then there's also all the records uh, from 1967 at Beaver all the way through uh, to just before the classic. So let's get on over to the computer, and uh, we'll take a look at this uh, 1975 press guide. All right, everybody. Back here at the computer with the uh, 1975 Bassmasters Classic Press Guide. We got a uh, picture of the, the, the trophy here. Eventually Jack Haynes would uh, win this, uh, again on the Currituck Sound in North Carolina. Um, let's uh, head on to the next page here. So first page, we got a pretty cool picture of the uh, 1971 Bassmaster Classic, the blast off. You can see the smoke uh, from Ray's gun. Um, and then the headline is uh, Pro Bass Fishing Launches $400,000 Tournament Trail in 1976. So the 76 trail, which we just covered in Season at a Glance on the website, uh, was a total of about $400,000 um, payout. 
And then uh, in the bottom right hand corner, we've got the 76 tournament trail schedule. Uh, first tournament in January, they're going to be stopping on the St. Johns River. Things really don't change much over time. Uh, Louisiana Invitational in February on Toledo Bend. Uh, the South Carolina Invitational in May at Santee, Santee Cooper. Virginia Invitational in June on uh, Bugs Island or a car, depending upon what side of the, uh, the line you live on. Then they're going to go to Tennessee uh, in July, fish Cordell Hall uh, Reservoir. And then there's the Bassmaster Team Championship, or better known as the Federation Championship or Bass Nation now, uh, in September. Uh, then we've got, in September, we've got the All-American on Bull Shoals. And then, of course, you end up the year with the Bassmasters Classic in October at a Mystery Lake. So let's go to the next page. Uh, we've got Ray Scott and Mr. Bass. And in the uh, intro here, what he's talking about is, uh, you know, how BASS started in 67 uh, with that first tournament at Beaver, and then it really got formalized in 68. Uh, talking essentially about the history of, of the Bass Angler Sportsman Society and the magazine, et cetera, et cetera. So the next page, we got uh, essentially a, a look at the previous classics, and they're going to start with uh, Classic 74. Tommy Martin won that event, of course, on Wheeler Lake, and uh, he won it with a flex spinnerbait and uh, crankbait. Uh, got his wife there looking at that nice check, and uh, he's holding a pretty cool trophy, I must say. Next page uh, highlights the 73 Classic, but we've also got some all-time Bassmaster Classic records here. Best winning uh, total, lowest winning total, largest bass, uh, most bass caught in a Classic, et cetera, et cetera. And again, I'm going to put all this on the website under historical pictures. Uh, that way you guys can go and, and read this at your you know, own, own leisure. Um, also got uh, how they finished uh, the 74 Classic, so we had uh, obviously uh, Tommy Martin won it. Roger Moore made a pretty valiant effort uh, to win it, but lost it on the last day. Bobby Meter was in third, uh, fourth place was Ricky Green, and fifth place was uh, Charlie Campbell, who actually qualified for the Classic through the Federation that first time. So, next page, we've got... Uh, Ray Breckenridge, who won the 73 Classic, uh, beating Bill Dance out on the last day. Uh, we then have uh, third place was Don Norton, fourth place was uh, Russell Cook, and fifth place was Tom Mann. Then we go to the 72 Classic, which is a pretty cool classic, because the guy that won it, uh, Don Butler, was the actually the first real member of, of the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, he uh, dropped a hundred bucks down uh, to Ray and, and said, "I want to be a life member." And you know, the story goes that you know he was the the first member of, of BASS. So, how did they finish at the '72 Classic? You got Don Butler uh, beat out Ricky Green, uh, and third place was Tom Mann. Fourth place was uh, Jim Finley, and then uh, fifth place was uh, Joe Wilson. And if you want to read the rest of the results, you can go to the website. Okay, so we got the 71 Classic, the first classic that there is. You've got a picture of uh, Bobby Murray and Bobby Murray's wife and Ray Scott. Uh, Murray's looking at that uh, $10,000 check, uh, smiling pretty good. So we, uh, we had uh, Bobby Murray, Tom Mann, George Oates, Roland Martin, and Bobby Meter made up the top five. So now we got the uh, advertisement for the next classic, um, and uh, this is a, a, a cartoon drawn by Bob Grable. Uh, Grable did a lot of cartoons for Bass in the early days, an amazing cartoonist, and uh, pretty, pretty neat drawn there. So now we're going to go profiles of the pros, and, and what this is going to do is it's going to look at all the classic contenders give a really, really good bio of all of them. Um, and uh, so now we have uh, Roland Martin here. He won Bass Angler of the Year, so he was the first qualifier, obviously. Uh, and some of the, 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 the verbiage here says, uh, top all-time winner of pro bass anglers with $47,423.80. Uh, 
Martin is America's most scientific bass fisherman and 1975 Bass Angler of the Year. So, pretty neat stuff. We have uh, Tommy Martin, uh, actually qualified uh, through winning the tournament in 74, winning the Classic in 74. Um, and uh, then we have in third place, or second place angler of the year was Bill Dance at 33 years old. Uh, by the way, Tommy Martin was 34. Roland Martin, go back to Roland here, see if I can pull it up real quick. 35 years old. So they're all young, young guys at this time. So you have in third place, in his first full time or full year of competition is Jimmy Houston. And Jimmy Houston at this time was 30 years old. So a bunch of young bucks. Um, anyway, yeah, so he qualifies for the Classic his first year uh, full time on the tour. Uh, that, that really says something. And then we uh, have uh, Ricky Green. Uh, Ricky Green, again, was also 30 years old, and uh, I believe this would be his, I can't remember, third or fourth classic that he had qualified for. Uh, next, you had Jack Haynes, again, another rookie on the Bassmaster Trail in 75 at 25 years old. And uh, Haynes would eventually, and he would go on to win this event. Next would be Elroy Kruger of Texas. Uh, he was 35 years old, and Kruger's a freaking uh, just a really, really well-known, a phenomenal fisherman out of Texas. And uh, when he was fishing the Bassmaster circuit back in the day, he was always one of the guys to beat. Then, of course, you've got Rick Klon of Montgomery, Texas, who's 29 years old. And uh, we all know what, what Rick went on to do. Uh, this was his second classic that he had qualified for. You got Phil Green uh, out of Monroe, Louisiana, 29 years old. You getting the, getting the theme here. Everybody's pretty darn young. Then we have uh, famous bait maker Tom Mann. Um, you follow the Alabama. Uh, he... Uh, he qualified for five in a row. I think this was the fifth in a row that he had qualified for. We got Marvin Baker out of Broadus, Texas. Uh, he was another guy that was a phenomenal, phenomenal angler out of the state of Texas. Uh, but, you know, anybody that's less than 50 years old really doesn't know who he is or has ever heard of him. And likewise would be Roger Moore of Branson, Missouri. Uh, Moore was... Uh, Almost won the 74 Classic. Um, amazing, amazing angler, uh, and, but I don't know why he got out of it. If you look at his stats from back in the day, he was always in contention. Um, the stud of an angler out of Branson. Oh, and by the way, Marvin Baker was the elder statesman of this Classic at the age of 49. And then we got uh, Ray Breckenridge, uh, who was the 1973 Bassmaster Classic uh, winner. Uh, Breckenridge was out of Arkansas and uh, was 46 years old at the time. And then we got an Indianapolis, Indiana guy. So, you know, it didn't start with Jacob Wheeler for you younger guys. Uh, we have Lloyd McIntyre who qualified for a couple of classics back in the day. And at the time of the 75 classic, he was 34 years old. Then on the lower right, we got a familiar face, uh, Al Lindner, Brainerd, uh, Minnesota. And uh, he, I think this is his first or second qualification uh, in the Classic. Next would be uh, John Powell. And Powell is, was known back in the day as uh, a, a shallow water angler. And, and his mantra was, if I stick my rod tip in the water and I see the third guide, I'm in too deep a water. Uh, his idea was that he would want, want to make anywhere from two to three casts per minute. The more cover he hit, the better opportunity he felt of getting a fish. And so troll motor on high and hit as much as you could. Next page, we got Paul Chambly, Raleigh, North Carolina. Paul was 41 at the time. Qualified for a couple of classics. In fact, he almost won this classic here. Um, if it wasn't for the bad weather on the last day of the tournament, uh, possibly he could have. And then we have Stan Sloan, Zorro Spinnerbaits. Uh, Sloan at the time, uh, let me see, he was 39 years old. 
and uh, he won that first Beaver event in 1967. Next would be Don Mann, the brother of famous Tom Mann. Uh, this would be the first time uh, in the history of uh, the Classic that two brothers had actually qualified for the Classic at the same time. Next would be Russell Cook, Hollister, Missouri. I don't know much about him. He was 32 years old at the time. Uh, let's see. Next would be Greg Ward. Now there's a, a record with Greg Ward. He qualifies for his first Classic in 75 and becomes the youngest angler ever to fish the Bassmaster Classic at the age of 18, and that record is still held today. Next page is uh, Bo Dowden, Nat I'm, I can't ever pronounce that, <laughs> that city, Louisiana. And uh, Dowden at the time was 34 years old. This was the second classic that he had qualified for. Uh, he finished 13th in the 74 classic and would eventually go on to win the 1980 classic up in New York. Another familiar face next to him is Johnny Morris, Springfield, Missouri. Uh, Morris was a, a phenomenal angler back then. He qualified for five straight classics, uh, which meant that the guy could fish. He wasn't just the, the owner of Bass Pro Shops, which by in 1975 had only been in business for maybe five years at the most. Next to uh, Morris is a gentleman by the name of Bill Ward, who just happens to be the father of Greg Ward on the previous page. So this is the first time a father and son actually are fishing in the Bassmaster Classic together. And uh, both Bill and, and Greg are also related to the infamous Virgil Ward of Bass Buster Lures. So the fishing runs deep in that family. John Hall, Lynchburg, Virginia was the next angler. Uh, he was 34 years old. Uh, when he made it, uh, Billy Westmoreland, uh, Selena, Tennessee, uh, 38 years old when he made it. And, of course, uh, John Hall and Billy Westmoreland both qualified for this classic by winning uh, their events. Then we got Dee Thomas, who won the Bull Shoals event. Uh, Newark, California, the first Californian to ever fish in the Bassmaster Classic. We have uh, Wu Daves. <coughs> excuse me, of Chester, uh, Virginia, uh, who won the car event and uh, at 29 years old gets into his first Bassmaster Classic. Next we have uh, John Pryor, who won the Texoma event, uh, gets into the Classic for the first time. And uh, next to him is Nash Roberts III, who got into the Classic via the Federation. Uh, he was the number one angler in the uh, Louisiana team, and the team won the, won the uh, Federation uh, Championship that year. So we got next page, essentially got a cartoon here, uh, pretty funny. We got $5,000 for the boat, $3,500 for the truck, $500 for the fishing equipment. Would you believe that we caught, what we caught figures out to be $1,500 a pound? That's pretty funny, just if you add that up, so you got eighty five nine thousand dollars to fully get you out on the water fishing in a boat motor and tackle. Um, I wish we had that today. <laughs> All right, so go through the invitationals who won it. Uh, again, Billy Westmoreland uh, won the Florida Invitational. They got uh, Marvin Baker won the Toledo Bend event. D Thomas. One Bull Shoals again, uh, introducing flipping to the world it would take actually a couple more years and Dave Glebe to go back and wax a bunch of people before people really took the flipping thing seriously. Then we got uh, Wu Dave's wins at Carr. Roland Martin goes to Santee Cooper in, in Clean's house. Uh, he won uh, 64 pounds over 52 pounds, 11 ounces. Pretty pretty good uh, shellac in there. And then, uh, of course, we got John Pryor uh, wins Texoma. That was a pretty pretty big uh, deal, too. He's 66-4, Vice uh, Elroy Kruger, who came in second with 58. So, pretty good deal. Then, the uh, second to the last page, we had the 75 tournament trail at a glance with all the anglers that qualified for the Classic. Uh, gives their event, 
the number of points they got in that event, or maybe it's the place that they got in that event. Whether or not they fished, uh, there were a lot of anglers that only fished, you know, two or three events uh, and still made the classic, which would never happen today, you know. And then uh, the next page, the last page of the uh, magazine, what we have is a list of all the tournaments that had been held up to that date with their winning weight and the person that won it. So that's the uh, 1975 Bassmaster Classic press guide, and I hope you guys liked, uh, liked going through it. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, to me, stuff like this is just, you know, this is the best thing in the world. Um, to be able to look back at the 1975 Classic, who fished it, you know, how did they get there, uh, how old were they? And, uh, it, you know, to me, there's, there's, there's nothing like it. So if you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you like the channel, please subscribe. Uh, we've only been around for, you know, a short time and we would like to get our subscribers up and, uh, you know, if you can tell your friends, that would, that would help out tremendously. Uh, you can hit us up on Facebook, uh, Bass Fish and Archives on Facebook. We're also on Instagram, Bass Fish and Archives there. And then, of course, the website is bass-archives.com. Uh, go check us out over there. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing what we've uh, done in the last year with respect to uh, documentation of the history of the sport. If you like old ads, boat ads, uh, you know, old fishing uh, articles and stuff like that, it's the place to go. And pictures, tons of pictures. So thanks again, and uh, we hope to see you next Saturday. Have a good one.